In this video, I'm going to be showing you the differences between acid catalyzed hydration, ozimicuration and demicuration, and hydroboration of alkenes. So we're going to start with acid catalyzed hydration. If you have this compound and you have H2SO4 and H2O, the first step is protonation. This is going to pick up hydrogen. It's going to pick up hydrogen from this. Okay. Now, when it picks this hydrogen, this bond is broken. Next step, you're going to have the hydrogen attached to the less substituted side of that double bond. So you're going to have the hydrogen attached here. Now, because this is a line structure, I'm not going to show the hydrogen. When hydrogen attaches here, this side becomes positive. So you have a carbocation. Tertiary carbocation is more stable than the secondary carbocation, which is more stable than the primary carbocation. And because this carbocation is secondary and you have an adjacent carbon that is tertiary, the carbocation tends to rearrange. So this hydrogen here, there is one hydrogen there, is going to rearrange, forming what we call a hydride shift. Okay, so that is a hydride shift. After rearrangement from that step, you're going to have the carbocation then comes here. The hydrogen has gone to that side. The next step is the H2O is going to attack the carb carbon with the carbocation and attaches itself. So you have O, H, and H with a positive sign. Now at this point, we're going to be deprotonating one of the hydrogen. So this hydrogen would leave, okay? You can use another molecule of water to do that or any base in the system. That is gonna deprotonate the hydrogen, that bond breaks, and on this side, you have your major product. Catalyzed hydration tend to rearrange the carbocation to get the most stable carbocation if it is possible. Now for demacuration, we are going to have the same compound. For the ozimacuration and demacuration, we have this as the reagent. So the first step, this Hg is going to attack this carbon, forcing this double bond to also attack the mercury. So it happens at the same time. Now, when this other part attacks the mercury, it forces this to leave. From there, we're going to have this intermediate formed where you have both carbon gently attached to the Hg, okay? So the Hg still has this. Now that mercury is going to now have a positive sign on it. This is why this reagent does not do rearrangement, okay? It's not gonna rearrange because we are not forming a carbocation. So this is the major difference between that and the hydration reaction we saw earlier. So with this H2O, we attach to the more substituted side because again, this is macognical. So it attacks the carbon that, are, that is more substituted. When it does that, this bond breaks. So the next step, we're going to have the OH2 attached right here, and the HGOAC on this side. The next step, 
to remove one of these hydrogen using another H2O molecule. This hydrogen is going to be picked up and that bond will break. So you have your OH exactly where you want it. And then this is still here, right? And that's where the sodium borohydride comes in. So the sodium borohydride would just remove this. And that gives us the final product, which is OH. So this has been kicked out. Okay. I just want you to remember that when you use this reagent, the, it doesn't form a carbocation intermediate, so there is no need for carbocation rearrangement. But if you use hydration, you have to rearrange to make sure you have the most stable carbocation before you add the H2O. The last one, the hydroboration, again, we're using the same molecule so that you see how different all the products we form would look like. So you have this alkene, and for hydroboration, we have BH3 in THF, so that's your first reagent. The second reagent is peroxide and sodium hydroxide. So whenever you see this, that is an anti makognikov reagent. So what this does is add the OH to the less substituted side, okay? Hydration is going to add the OH to the more substituted side, and it makes sure that the carbocation formed is rearranged, if possible, to get you the, the most stable product. If you use ozimicuration demicuration, it does Makognikov products, but it does not rearrange carbocations. And then this one does anti makognikov It adds the OH to the less substituted side of the alkene. Okay. The first step is the BH3 adding. So you have B, H, H, and then H. Okay. So this is going to attack the boron. Okay. Now this bond is going to break and attach here. So that means the hydrogen breaks off after this attacks the boron and attaches itself to the more substituted side of the alkene. Now, in acid catalyzed hydration, the hydrogen added to the less substituted side. In this one, the hydrogen is going to add to the more substituted side. The BH2 remaining is on the less substituted side. So you're going to have this as your first intermediate. Now, before we continue, this is going to happen. I'm going to have to go to the next page to show you this, okay? You see the peroxide, this is the structure of a peros peroxide. And the sodium hydroxide is going to have to react to form the next reagent we actually need. So sodium is positive, this is negative. Now the one reacting is the OH negative, okay? So that picks up this hydrogen and this bond will break. Now, that gives us HOO with a negative sign on the oxygen, all right? And of course, oxygen would have six lone pairs because of the added electron. So now, this reagent I'm going to use for my next step, okay? So bringing that reagent here, We're going to now attack. So remember the sodium is hanging around. We're not using it for the reaction at the moment. So what we are going to do is attack this boron, okay? Now, when we attack the boron, the next step would be this. The boron of course now has the O, O, H attached. Now, the next step I want you to pay attention is an intramolecular reaction or rearrangement happening. This bond that is attached to the boron is going to rearrange. So it breaks off and attaches itself to this oxygen. Okay? 
So that arrow is showing that instead of this carbon connecting to the boron, it's going to reconnect to the oxygen, breaking off the bond to the boron. And when that happens, it forces this OH to leave. Okay? So this is what you will get from that step. You're going to have this carbon bonding to oxygen. Now, remember, this oxygen is still bonded to the BH2. It was not broken. So you have it as, as this. Okay. Now, the OH, the OH we just kicked out, this one here, is going to come back here and attack this boron. When it does that, it forces this to break. Okay, now from here, you would have this with O negative. The last step, remember, when this OH picked this H, it formed H2O. That H2O is going to protonate this oxygen. So the oxygen picks hydrogen from the H2O, this bond breaks, and the final product is going to be an alcohol, a primary alcohol, okay? And that is it. So this is the different reagents that you can use to add hydroxide or OH to an alkene and what each of them would do. Thank you for watching and do have a wonderful day. Bye.